Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Thursday, November 7th, 2019. A quick check of the tropics. Clearly nothing happening down here in the deep tropics. Almost completely empty of any areas of vorticity organizing in the deep tropics, even the subtropics up here. Everything's kind of linear associated with a front or whatnot. So the hurricane season definitely winding down. As we would expect, this is not unusual. Every once in a while, we will have something that will develop in November, but I'm not seeing anything in the global models right now to indicate that we will have something this year. Here's the vorticity associated with the strong cold front and the Arctic air that's going to be pouring into the lower 48. This is round one. Round two will be coming next week. And I'll focus on that a little bit more in just a minute in the lower 48 segment of today's update. A real quick glance at the satellite animation here, courtesy of Tropical Tidbits. Uh, Again, down here in the Caribbean, coming in from the Atlantic Basin, uh, or the tropical Atlantic. Clear skies for the islands, so very nice down there if you've got any cruise plans, etc. High uh, level winds, very high velocity. As well, strong westerly winds cutting across the deep tropics as we would expect to see this time of the season. But boy, everything is nice and clear from Barbados through the windwards and leewards, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic over to Cuba, Jamaica and the Caymans, the Bahamas with the ongoing recovery efforts there from Dorian up in the northwest Bahamas, Grand Bahama, etc. No weather worries to worry about, just kind of Sunny and probably still pretty hot down there. Everybody except South Florida here is going to be in this cold pattern. There's the delineating uh, line of clouds between the very cold air showing up in infrared imagery and the last uh, vestiges of summer, what's left of it, trying to hold on for dear life, uh, but it's going to lose the battle. The seasons have to change at some point. I love summer. I like muggy weather. I like convective activity. It's interesting. You know, extreme weather one way or the other is interesting. It sometimes can get out of control, and that's what we're here to do is to be aware of things like that, learn about things that may be coming, the processes involved, etc. And, yep, it's changing from a tropical cyclone season-type pattern to one that's more mid-latitude storm-based, cold, frigid air, lake effect snows, blizzards, coastal storms, you name it we will be on top of it. So anything brewing in the tropics, this is a nice look at the Atlantic Basin. Again, there's the west coast of Africa right there. Here's eastern North America over here. This is the 850 millibar level of the atmosphere, about 5,000 feet up. And we see the vorticity in the atmosphere or spin. Energy is another way that I like to look at it. And again, a quick refresher, what do I look for down here in the tropics? I look to see if any of these little areas of yellow uh, try to bundle together instead of being strung out. Does it bundle? And, again, I should make a T-shirt for that maybe next summer, and we'll see. I do have a T-shirt I'm going to talk about at the end today, but that's the big question. Does the energy bundle? Uh, And down in the tropics, when it does so and does so efficiently, you get tropical cyclones. And so with that being said, we can just scan through The next several days, and there's one day, there's two days, three days, so forth and so on, going out to about a week, and right there, and all along that time frame, really nothing of note. Maybe some kind of an interesting impulse over here in the Gulf of Mexico that comes out after this front lays down there, a surface low, um, probably non-tropical, develops off the front. If we go back in time and look at that, you see the evolution there. It's pretty far out in time. The front comes down, and that little impulse there in the gulf uh, fires up. And it'll be something to watch because it may be the seedling for a potential coastal storm if it doesn't just go out like this. Sometimes these low-pressure areas will come up and ride the east coast and get energized from the jet stream up here, and voila, you have a big coastal storm. But I'm not sold on it yet. been monitoring Twitter and other social media platforms for those that really focus on winter weather more than myself. You think about Ben Knoll. I reference him a lot 
uh, for tropical signals, especially teleconnections, long-range signals, etc., the Madden-Julian oscillation, so forth and so on. There's uh, him and others that I focus on, and I'll talk about that when we get a big storm signal showing up. I'm going to introduce you to some people, and that's what it's all about. I want to share knowledge. I'm not going to hoard all the people that I follow. You know, let's share it. Share the wealth. Share the education, a more educated um, consumer. And in this case, you are a consumer. You're visiting my site. You're watching these videos. Maybe you're a patron and supporting what I do financially. Yep, everybody's invested. And so I want to make sure that you are the most educated that you can be, at least from, from, from what I can do. And, you know, one of the people we follow, a lot of people know this gentleman, James Spann. And he is, of course, uh you know, the the big cheese there in the Birmingham market in vicinity in Alabama, uh, almost a half a million followers on Twitter. Pretty amazing. And he has tweets, tropical, severe weather, um, and then, of course, winter, when the winter <clears throat> weather uh, blues, and in this case, purples, uh, raises their, their ugly heads. And it's plural, yes, because we do get these bouts, plural, of cold weather. And here we go. This is what he's talking about. Record cold is likely. This color chart here shows us the anomalies based on the GFS ensemble. Two meter temperatures about six feet off the ground. Very cold with the exception of South Florida. Yeah. So yeah, it's, I mean, some of these are close to some of these purples in here, more than 30 degrees below the average. So departures from normal. And then look out west, warmer by a good bit as well uh, as the ridge holds strong in the west. So changes are coming, and as such, as an example, here in my neck of the woods, southeast North Carolina, portions of South Carolina as well, a couple of counties in Georgia, a freeze watch has been issued. The first killing freeze of the season, tender vegetation, the growing season, all of that will come to an abrupt end as we look at freezing temperatures setting up shop over a good deal of the southeast. Wait till you see this in the coming days. Uh, it's going to really populate with more colors. Now, one of the areas that I will be watching this winter, this off-season, will be the Great Lakes, especially right up here, for a potential field mission to study, observe, report, educate, all those things on lake effect snows. I've never been in one of those events and I've been encouraged by some of my closer colleagues and supporters to do so. And so I've been reading up on that right now, some winter weather advisories for portions of Michigan as an example, and then over here right off of the lakes. And so one great way to learn about things is to read the forecast discussion. You know, we read these from time to time for hurricanes, but these are also valuable for regular Weather, whether it's fair weather, sunny weather, beach weather, stormy weather, a blizzard, a lake effect snow event, a flood event, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is a great piece of information here. And the way you get to it, you go to weather.gov, you see the address there. And as an example, you just click on the map somewhere, wherever you live. Or you can input your zip code up here. You get to the landing page, and they have this thing called the forecast discussion. And I was reading through here about the different uh, parameters that are setting up from Buffalo over to Rochester and other areas in New York coming off Lake Huron as an example. Um, and really the overall tendency is for some minor to moderate uh, lake effect snows over the next few days, winter weather advisory in effect, three to five inches of snow. It's interesting because in that area they get a winter weather advisory for you know three to five inches. If we had three to five inches here in Wilmington or if it was going to be in Raleigh or Atlanta or Dallas or, God forbid, Houston, <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? It would be mayhem. But in the Rochester, Buffalo area and other areas off of those lakes, yeah, no big deal. Uh, Buffalo, Niagara Falls, you know, that region. So I'm going to be watching that and I'll be reading this discussion uh, as they look into the long term. Um, they talk about how the much colder air is coming in in this paragraph, but the overall synoptic pattern is still in question. The trajectory of the wind across those unfrozen lakes is important in setting up 
the lake effect bands. And sometimes those can go semi-convective. Usually those lake effect bands are fairly shallow in the atmosphere. They're not very tall bands of precip, you know, thickness in the atmosphere, you know, how thick the cloud bands are. But sometimes they do grow a little bit more, and they can dump a tremendous amount of lake effect snow. Unfortunately, for somebody like me who would have to drive, uh, presumably, from Wilmington with all my equipment all the way up here, um, you don't get a lot of advance notice. Maybe a couple of days that you see the setup coming. Three if you're really lucky. Uh, I think I could make that drive in one day. I'd be pretty darn tired, but yeah, I guess it's doable. But this is one of the things that I'll be looking for. And I like to read these forecast discussions because it helps me to understand the process involved. And people up here, they are already familiar with lake effect snows, so there's not much that I'm going to be able to do for them. But other of you, others of you that are watching elsewhere from either the lower 48 or elsewhere across the globe, I mean, my YouTube channel does have subscribers all over the world. It is a fascinating part of meteorology. Um, the hydrology, the way that the uh, atmosphere and the water interface of the lakes interact, and then, of course, the geography of the landscape with the uh, hills that they have and these little uh, ridges right off the lakes, etc. It's really fascinating. So it's more than just, oh, Mark's going storm chasing for lake effect snows. No, 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 no. It's like a field trip into the world of physical geography and operational meteorology with the impacts on society. I think that's fascinating, and I look forward to taking you along with me on that journey, so stay tuned. All right? Um, so the whoops, T-shirt that I have been talking about, uh, here it is. The link I'll put in today's discussion uh, in the description of the video today. It's our official Hurricane Highway t-shirt. Now, why is this so special? On the front, it's our nice logo, but on the back, and I took about a day and a half of working on this to get the graphic right, etc. I'm really happy about it, uh, proud of it. I think it's going to be cool. It is the U.S. tour. You know, it's kind of like a rock concert. I talked about this uh, a couple of different updates ago. And it's, it is. It's like when, when a band goes on tour and they have all the cities they've been to, etc. You know, cheer groups do this, dance studios, uh, whatever, right? You know, football season, basketball. You know, it's like a swag thing. But this is important because what we do here at HurricaneTrack.com and the Hurricane Track brand and the interaction with all of you guys is very special. It's very unique. Like I said, there's more people that have walked on the moon throughout history than do what I do uh, and what people like Josh Morgerman or James Reynolds and others that track, especially tropical cyclones, if we're talking about something specifically here, in, in this case, of course, hurricanes for me. Really, there's only a handful of people in the entire history of mankind that have done this like we have. So it's special. It really is. So here's the shirt. Um, I priced them as reasonable as I could at 32 bucks. Custom Ink will charge just a little bit on top of that, I think. I don't know. Um, plus shipping, maybe it's just $32, and then they take a cut of that. I don't really know how it works, but it, it doesn't inflate to like 50 bucks or anything. <laughs> um, and you can buy it, and you can even contribute a little bit more if you want to. Whatever the case may be, there you go. That's how you do it. And they will ship it directly to you. I don't have to worry about that. Uh, we got to get six of them before they start shipping them. And so I figure we can get six of them going, right? And my goal is to try to sell a hundred of them. And this will help towards equipment uh, and education for next year. Um, you know, specifically, we're trying to keep our helium supply intact. We have two tanks, one in Houston, one in Wilmington that cost about 70 bucks a month. And I'm hoping to just pay for that. You know, I'm not raking in big-time money from this, but I wanted to offer something that I thought you guys would appreciate. And um, is it going to go back? Yes. And, uh, you know, show off to people. So there you go. I'll put the link to it in the description today. And spread the word. Share it with your friends. 
um, you know, I want to sell a hundred of them. I got to sell six just to get them to ship. I think we can do that probably within an hour today. But if we sell more than a hundred, even better, you know, that's great. I've got two of them. I've got a white one and a gray one, and they are really awesome. So there you go. I'll uh, I'll talk about this from time to time, and make sure we spread the word. All right. And oh, if you are a patron on Patreon uh, at different levels, I need to go in and look. Um, some of you will be getting one of these shirts complimentary, you know, as a token of my appreciation of you being a patron uh, for a certain amount of time or longer. And I'll be going in through my Patreon dashboard and contacting those of you uh, that qualify for that, and you'll be hearing from me, so get ready. And by the way, these are best uh, in, um, why doesn't it have the shirt back? Let's see if it'll, there we go. These are best in either uh, white or gray, just so you know. Uh, any other colors, and they just look funky, trust me. So white or gray in pretty much any size. All right? All right. Well, that is it from me for today. As always, I appreciate you tuning in. we got a lot coming up, a lot going on, even as hurricane season winds down. Let's keep the YouTube channel growing here. If you're a new viewer, you know, subscribe to the channel, as they say. Hit the notification button so you get notified when I post an update. And for our patrons, of course, you get the updates first, as well as other benefits. So consider joining and supporting on Patreon at any level. we got all kinds of things coming up, including a new podcast next month and our new web series that starts in January called The Hurricane Highway. And I'm going to talk more about that in early December. I will be releasing the first official trailer about that soon as well. Lots and lots of stuff going on, even as we say goodbye to the 2019 Atlantic hurricane season. But remember, we still talk about hurricanes, the upcoming potential for next year, etc. Um, it's kind of like when the NFL season is over. Remember when we used to have Mike and Mike? Uh, it's too bad they got split up on ESPN Radio, but that's a story for another day. Not my department. But I used to listen to that, and they would either, you know, the NFL season was over, so they talked about other stuff. But uh, NFL always came up, right? Same thing with college basketball or any other sport. Baseball just ended, yet there are still people talking about next year's baseball season. Spring training starts in whatever months. Same thing with hurricane season. We're always within six months or less of the next season, even when it's over. It's true. It's only six months away till we start again. All right, I am done now. Mark Seth of HurricaneTrack.com. Thank you for watching. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.